Good afternoon, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Oh, we don't need a mic in here, do we? Um, it's always good when the controversial speaker goes before you, I find. <laughs> so uh, I apologise if mine's uh, uh, really dull and boring after that. Um, I'll, uh, I'll do my best to kind of spice it up a bit. Uh, it's, um, it's, uh, it's great to be here in Wales. What a fantastic venue. You definitely get the words, Dermot. You definitely get the prize for having the most fantastic viewpoint from the, uh, from the afternoon slot. So uh, first of all, thanks everyone for still being here this, uh, at this time of the day. Must have been a, must have been a great uh, a great conference for you to uh, stay around this long. Look, I was asked to talk about um, a few things. Why the UK has transposed uh, sewer so early? Uh, why, uh, what sort of challenges uh, we have faced in the negotiations and doubtless will continue to face as we, as we implement. But I'm not actually going to talk about any of that. Uh, it might, um, I'm going to make it up and uh, talk about and respond uh, to some of what my colleagues uh, have said, which um, were fascinating and I agree wholeheartedly with uh, lots of things that you've both said. So, uh, and we'll come on to the kind of directive thing at the end and you'll probably might have some, uh, some questions that you might want to ask. Uh, who am I? I better do that first of all, and, I, and what do I do? Uh, I'm Sally Collier. I'm the chief executive of something called the Crown Commercial Service. Singular, not in your programme, we've pluralised us. But uh, we're singular, we're the Crown Commercial uh, Service. Uh, we do uh, three things. It kind of is what it says on the title, really. We're the Crown. We try to act on behalf of the Crown wherever we can. That's a novel concept with 50,000 purchasing bodies. Um, we do things commercially, and you'll notice uh, the change in the word from procurement to commercial, and we offer a service to our customers, and our customers are uh, central government departments, local authorities, NHS trusts, uh, around 1,500 customers. Uh, we uh, were created on the 1st of April last year. We're not um, yet a year old. And it's been pretty game-changing what we've tried to do in that year. And it's certainly not finished. Uh, we have a long way uh, to go. It's life's work, actually, procurement, commercial, call it what you like. Um, I think we'll all be retired and uh, this conference will still be talking about what we need to do to make things uh, better. Uh, and so it should be. Uh, nothing ever gets uh, fixed and perfect, does it? So what do we do in the Crown Commercial Service? We do three things. Firstly, we buy a lot of things uh, on behalf of our customers. 15 billion this year, rising uh, to uh, more than 15 billion next year. Um, and uh, over the last year and in the future, we'll be buying that in very different ways. I'll come on to talk about that. Secondly, um, we advise uh, we advise on uh, around 60 of the government's most complex commercial uh, deals going on out there. Uh, and thirdly, we implement the legislative, I can never say that, framework of the day. We had the negotiation, negotiating team in Brussels. We set uh, and consult on the legislation. And we also implement uh, our minister's uh, policies of the day. Now then, uh, and, and you will, won't be, uh, you'll know that in a few weeks' time, we may well have uh, another set of ministers, even if we have uh, the same colour, uh, we'll have another set of ministers with a different set of priorities. So um, those three things have never been together in a single organisation before. Uh, and that's the game changer, because what we had previously was policy being set in isolation of the people actually buying the stuff. The referees in one area setting the rules and the people spending £15 billion over there. And actually putting them together is very, very powerful. We haven't even begun to really exploit the power of having those two functions in the same organisation. We also, and our mission is to turn ourselves into an A-class football team uh, with a small number of brilliant referees, <laughs> as opposed to um, lots and lots of people who know how to referee and run fantastic processes uh, into the, the, the full picture. That's exactly what we've been trying to do. And that takes, you can't do that overnight, 
because it's about changing the DNA of the whole organisation. It's about getting people to think differently about what they are doing. So I usually, if I do have slides, some of you will have seen it, I usually use the kind of DNA curve of public procurement. And we've traditionally spent lots and lots of time in the bit that is the procurement process. Um, I've been very good at it uh, and understanding it, and much less time in the front bit that's before you go anywhere near the process, the non-legislative bit, and contract management. And what we're trying to do in the Crown Commercial Service is flatten that curve so that we've got many more people who can think about the front end and many more people who can manage contracts and get the value uh, out of the end. And that's a long-term long job. We're starting it. Uh, we're moving from having, I think when I took over, we had nigh on 200 framework agreements. And um, yeah, I'm not going to completely diss framework agreements. They're great when they're great. When they're awful, they're absolutely awful. They lock suppliers out for four years and they're lazy and 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 where they're brilliant and they're dynamic and they're, you know, they've got the right suppliers on and all those suppliers are getting business, they're great. So we need to move to new forms of contracting, uh, using the new dynamic purchasing rules, using more joint ventures, using more direct awards. In order to do that, it requires people to use their commercial judgment. Um, and uh, for, for us, the last year and certainly the next period is all about skills uh, and commercial skills and experience. Because, you, you know, in order to be that football player, um, you know, you need to have some scars. You need to have had some experience mixed with some brilliant new guys who have got the potential uh, to score the goals. But you need a mix. And we are, uh, we are busily recruiting uh, people with that experience and those scars. And why are we doing that? So they can use their judgment and their common sense that they would have used, and they can really instill that kind of culture change. Um, and uh, at the same time, we're, you know, we're losing, uh, we'll be losing people who won't be with us on the journey. Um, because this is a big culture change and a big DNA change. So that, that's kind of who we are and what we're trying to do. Uh, I'll talk a bit, about, uh, a bit about the rules. I've got some form here. I, uh, I've been in this game for a long time. Uh, I inherited the first set of rules to implement uh, many, many years ago. And I've been passionate about trying to drive reform in this set. Um, we're not quite, you know, I wish, I can only wish that we were in the territory where we didn't have any at all. We actually started off in the negotiating position with just get rid of it, you know, <laughs> reduce it to, um, you know, very, very small uh, package. Uh, but, you know, hey, we're uh, in Europe with lots of other countries and we've got what we've got and we set out uh, doggedly to make the best of, of what we had. And uh, I think we've got some very great wins, not just for the UK, but uh, for uh, across e Europe as a whole, and uh, joined together with uh, many of our colleagues who wanted exactly the same, uh, exactly the same reforms. So I think, uh, I think it's a really good package. Um, what we're not doing is uh, writing a 400 page guidebook to tell you how to implement the rules. I'm sorry, you know, um, I, I'm sure some of you uh, will be sad that we're not doing that. Um, uh, we are writing the smallest uh, guidebook that we can get away with. Um, and that then plays also to skills and judgment. And uh, actually, um, I, I'll say something about our current set of ministers. When our current set of ministers arrived, um, my minister demanded uh, to see all of the guidance that, is, uh, that, that existed about public procurement and that we were asking people to follow. So we got a truck and uh, took it to him and we said, you don't really want to see that minister, do you? It's kind of very detailed and boring. And he said, uh, yes, I do. Um, so we, we literally printed it all off and took it to him and he just looked at it and said, get rid of it. 
And uh, we said, what do you mean get rid of it? And he said, um, you know, it, it's just driving the complete wrong, wrong behaviours. And we said, but some of us have spent years writing this <laughs> wonderful guidance. In fact, my name was on, <laughs> and some people in the audience indeed <laughs> wrote it. I'm very sorry, I haven't said that up until now, but it was kind of surreptitiously removed from the... <laughs> um, uh, and why was it? Because we want people to use their judgment and not rely on a rule book. Now, I'm, not, I'm being trite here. We, don't, we need some rules. Of course we do. And we don't want to send people marching off into the court. But it's a, it's a kind of mindset. Um, it, it's a mindset change. Um, so, uh, and what I'm saying about, yeah, why did we do it quickly? Because we thought there were great freedoms and flexibilities in the new rules that we wanted to bring in uh, as quickly as possible. It wasn't easy, but um, I'm really pleased and proud of the team that um, we, we, we've now got this in place. And, uh, and look, you know, it, it'll, be, it'll be a bit bumpy and there won't be answers to everything. Um, but actually I could have waited another, we could have waited another year and tried to get you know, perfection and we wouldn't be, be able to use the um, freedoms that we've negotiated. So that you know, that's that that's why we've we've gone early, um, and you know, for for all the um, procurers and lawyers and and anyone else in the room, uh, uh, I would say um, you know, take advantage that that you know uh, that this is a heresy that you know there is no case law. Uh, people in the in the audience have heard me say this before, and I don't want that to terrify people. Uh, I want people to feel empowered by that and empowered to use their, uh, their judgment and their commercial judgment to get the right outcomes. And, you know, of course, we also need to take our supply community with us. Um, so they need to be uh, as appraised of what the art of the possible is uh, in this landscape too. So uh, I've got no idea whether um, I've talked for 10 minutes or not or whether I've stuck to the brief or not, uh, but that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>